Yes, thank you very much, Sean. And once again, a very big welcome to all of our attendees this morning. We want to say thank you for taking out the time on this Tuesday morning to listen to these toolbox talks. As always, brought to you by IATA, the Institute of Plumbing South Africa, as well as FEM. This morning we are taking a look at risk analysis, but we are asking the question, why? Why do we need to analyze the risk that we find on site? Now, because we are speaking to a lot of plumbers, a lot of safety professionals out there, uh, and including those out in the building environment, uh, even if you are here for the first time, you will know that risk is what actually plays the factor for the need of occupational health and safety. It's because of the hazards that exist on site that expose us to different types of risk. And this is the whole function of safety management systems. And then it goes further to ensure that we are healthy, not only when we start working, but during the course of our entire working career, we remain healthy so that when we finish, uh, we are still in a good quality of life and our job has not taken too much from us. Now, this might sound like uh, wishful thinking because jobs lead to a lot of different types of illnesses, and this is all risk. So we need to have a risk-based approach when we are doing any work, when we are going out onto the site, and even when we are doing small tasks. Never underestimate the power of a good risk assessment or a risk analysis. So we are going to be chatting about uh, what is a risk assessment, how do we go about doing this, and then the big question, why? Why is it so necessary for us to do this? Now, perhaps you've been onto site, you, know, you got there with your safety file, and you've been stopped on site because the risk assessment either did not have all the risks uh, that are stated on on the risk assessment that is actually on site, or perhaps you were stopped because it was not completed, or they wanted a different type of risk assessment. Now, if you do have these frustrations, and it does happen uh, as a plumber, I'm a safety professional, if I came to do work with you and I did not know the difference between uh, PVC piping or different types of conduit or even copper piping for that matter, you would get upset with me, but at the same time you would understand that I'm not a plumber. So as safety professionals, we understand that you don't know everything about safety. In fact, um, maybe I'm speaking for myself, but I don't know everything about safety. We are constantly learning. But if we don't get your feedback and understand what it is you're having difficulty with, we will not be able to assist you. So please, after this toolbox talk today, take down the numbers as well as the uh, email addresses, and you understand that you actually have access to the assistance that you need. So let's say you get to site and you do not know that there are three different types of risk assessment. The first one is a baseline or overall risk analysis. In other words, it encompasses the entire working profile. It looks at your company, your employees, uh, even your quality management system. It's supposed to give an overall view of what your risk rating is as a company. Now, there are many different ways of getting to the risk rating part of the risk assessment, but they are also very simple ways. So depending on what type of management system you have, we can go for a very, very basic cause and effect risk assessment. In other words, what is the cause, how are we going to fix it, and what is the end result? So very basic stuff. Then we have an issue or a task-based risk assessment. Now this drills down to the specific things that you are going to be doing on site. So let's give you a bit of an example between these two. A baseline risk assessment will be an understanding of where your company sits as an overall risk. It tells us what your tasks are, what your scope of work is, and also how many employees you have. What is the type of training system that you have in place? What is your medical surveillance, depending if you are working with chemicals or biological hazards, especially being in the plumbing industry? Now, this will give an overall view of working with certain types of geezers, 
with hot water, with normal water, with high pressured water. But it will not drill down directly into the installation of a geyser. It will give an overview. The issue or task-based risk assessment is fed from that baseline risk assessment. And now it takes each and every task that you perform as a company and it gives those a risk assessment. So now we analyze how do you install a geezer? How do you install Jojo tanks? How do you go about installing piping? But you cannot have the same task or issue-based risk assessment every time you do the same job. Now, this is where a lot of the plumbers are saying to us, but why not? I'm still doing the same thing. And yes, that is true. I would say 70 to 80% of the time when I've looked at the risk assessment, it is still the same method that you go about installing the geezer. And that is because you must do it according to the SAN standard. And there must be some sort of quality inspection. And this is why we have the PRRB, we have IOPSA, we have these types of institutes and regulators in order to ensure that the plumbers we are using are qualified and recognized in order that we feel safe for the installation being done. So we understand that you are governed by these standards. However, when you are installing a geezer, you might install it onto a brick wall with hangers or uh, some sort of attachment onto that wall in order to anchor it. Now, power tools, electric tools, dust, and the environment around you comes into play. If it was done outside, well, then it might be less likely to injure anybody inside a house. If that geezer was installed in a ceiling, well, then we need to take into consideration the type of panels that are in that ceiling. Can you walk on it? Can you not walk on it? Are there only certain places to walk on? So now you can see how this issue or task-based risk assessment doesn't only drill down on the actual geezer itself. It talks about everything around that geezer who else may be affected, and what else is in that environment that may affect you. This is why risk assessments as a baseline generally don't change. Your scope or type of work that you are doing as a plumber may never change unless you add in maybe high pressure machines or leak detection and you start doing other forms of plumbing. But if you are not doing that, your baseline risk assessment generally stays the same and you could be determined as a medium risk contractor. But the issue and task-based risk assessment will change almost every single time you are doing an installation. So I hope this helps you to understand why the need for risk assessment or risk analysis is so important. In fact, if you can, get yourself onto a course that explains risk assessment in more detail. Two to three day courses, uh, we even have online courses that you can attend and this will help you just to better understand how to go about performing risk analysis. But then one of the most vital types of risk assessments that we are finding a lot on site, aside from your baseline and issue based, is the continuous type of risk assessment. Now this is extremely effective when it comes to managing risk on site. Now let us just explain what the elements of this is. For one, it focuses on the specific task, very much like your issue and task based, but what this is doing is it's now while the work is being done. The issue and task-based risk assessment is prior to work. So you do that, you get all the risks, you've done your site visit, you've signed it off, and now you actually perform the task. What a continuous risk assessment does, uh, such as a DSTI or a job observation, all these types of risk analysis, what this does is it helps us to understand that what is being done is what you have written. Now you can see why this is so important. Some of you plumbers have said, well, it's a type of a policing system. Well, yes, if you feel that way, it is a type of policing system. But really what it is, it's a management system. It's not just saying we have our documents in place. The continuous based risk assessment is now saying we not only have our documents in place, but our attitude towards safety is the motivation behind doing it safely.
So the one is almost your word and the other one is your deed. And it's good to have your word, to have your statement on paper, but the actions or the deeds of the person is really what is going to prove to us that it is being done safely. Now, it is also very easy to understand and easy to implement compared to your baseline and issue based because it's almost like a check sheet. It also assesses the risk in order of priority. So the highest risk first so that we can try and eliminate it and then it mitigates it all the way down to your lower risk where you could just put on some PPE, some administrative control or perhaps you need a little bit more of induction or training. But it helps us to carry out risk analysis daily, weekly, monthly. So it's an ongoing management of our actual risk. And then it also addresses the needs of the workers. And this is extremely important and often overlooked. We want to look at the job as a whole because we want the client to be happy. But remember, occupational health and safety is looking at those who are performing the tasks. Those of you who are getting your hands dirty, we want to keep you safe. And then finally, and this is very important, it is planned and consistent. So please maybe take a look at the different types of continuous risk assessments you should have in your safety file. And again, if you don't have this, We've got the templates. If you want the templates, reach out to us. We can offer you these templates free of charge. We are not going to charge you for it. Obviously, if you need training on this, we can arrange the training. And through IOPSA, uh, you're getting a lot of discount on assisting your employees to understand how to implement this. But the majority of the time, it's so simple to understand. With a basic description of what we give you in the email, you should be able to perform them. So daily safe task instructions, job observations, pre-task evaluations, planned inspections, and even audits are just some types of continuous risk management. Now we'd like to ask you, what are you using? Are you using one? Are you using more? In fact, are you using all of them to ensure that you are remaining safe on site? So we can see here that the risk assessment itself is extremely important. In fact, it's one of the most vital parts of our management system. Now, risk assessment is such, it's very basic. It's taking the hazard or the source, the situation, uh, the potential for harm in terms of human injury, and it is trying to figure out what is that? What is the hazard? What is going to cause us to get injured? The risk then is the likelihood as well as the exposure level, uh, the severity of injury, and this exposure level is then rated into a high, medium, low. Uh, you even get other ones where it's catastrophic, so more than one person or more than a certain amount of money is lost, and it can go right into very, very deep detail, especially for bigger companies. For smaller guys, you can use the exact same system in order to have a very basic risk rating, low, medium, and high. So a risk rating is then determined by the actual risk matrix. And this is a very simple one that you see in front of you. Uh, it's a one to five system with a likelihood and consequences. Uh, so for instance, we'll take the example of working at heights. Uh, there is the risk of falling to a lower level, dropping tools to a lower level, or even items uh, falling or dropping uh, off the edge of where we are working. But let us take a look at your current scope of work. Let us say you had to install a geyser, uh, but it needed to be very high off the ground. So let's say it's about 1.8 meters. I don't know if that's according to sand standard, but it needed to be out of reach for you. Uh, so you got a ladder to put this geyser on. Would you say a ladder is the best form of safety equipment to use in order to reach that height? Well, it's certainly the easiest and quickest and probably the cheapest, but the likelihood of you falling is increased. It wouldn't be very low. It would be a very high likelihood. And the consequences of falling while holding a geezer would also be very high. So you can see the category that you are starting to fall into. It's starting to go red where 
immediately as safety officers, we would say, whoa, uh, there is something that needs to be done in order to mitigate or make it safer. And then we take a look at uh, maybe you use a scaffold and you have trained employees to use that scaffold. There is safe access. It's been signed off. It's been done according to your SANS 1885. Uh, all the safety requirements, your full protection plans, your harnesses, everything is there to ensure it's safe and you are using mechanical means to lift this geezer. Well, the likelihood of you falling now to a lower level is very low. Um, there's still a possibility, but it's not as high anymore. And the consequences of falling to a lower level and hitting the ground compared to falling in a, a safety harness is now extremely low because you have 15 minutes with which to get rescued. In fact, only five minutes with which to get rescued. And then you mitigate your risk even lower. So now we can see how we are taking a very simple matrix, just the likelihood and consequences, and checking where our risk rating is. So maybe we can ask you, based on how you are currently working, what is your risk rating? Oftentimes we say, is it safe to do? Where what we should be asking is how safe is it? The question is not whether we will work safely. That should be the norm. That should be governed by our management system. Rather, we want to check how effective our control measures are in making it safe, which means we must be proactive. We need to have a risk-based approach to our entire system of working. Now, if you need help with that, you can come down uh, to OHSS. You can go to our IOPSA and ask them. We will send you this information. Again, it's going to be free of charge. We do want to assist those out in the field and if you need some certain explanations don't forget the numbers at the end of this webinar where we can assist you oftentimes we are not available on the phone we might be doing audits and such but please just drop us a whatsapp and we will get back to you so now down to the real questions why do you need a risk analysis well one it helps you to identify what is the indicators of inconsistencies so where are we failing that it's causing incidents and accidents? And then it also helps to assist with the cause of the incident and accident. This is a root cause analysis that it helps us to provide. It helps us to prevent the reoccurrence of incidents and accidents. It also produces behavior patterns for safety and it becomes a live or continuous system that prevents the cost of life. So how do you go about doing it? Very simple. Identify the hazard, analyze the risk by means of a matrix, rate the risk, check what your current control measures are, analyze them and make changes if you need, act on those gaps, monitor the process and review the process as often as possible. Remember, a safety system is like a domino effect. When one system fails, the rest will likely follow. So please don't forget, as an IOPSA member, you do qualify for one of the free courses being held throughout South Africa, starting with Gauteng in March. If you are an IOPSA member, you can send two employees free of charge for each of the courses. I do believe that Cape Town is going to be hit pretty soon. So if you are in the Western Cape area, please reach out to us uh, because those courses are happening as we speak. And then if you need help, reach out to us at safety at iopsa.org, info at ohss.co.za, chris at ohss.co.za, and those two cell phone numbers at the bottom. You can WhatsApp and call us as well. Uh, but please, if you cannot get a hold of us on the phone, rather send a WhatsApp. Uh, so that we have that information and will be reminded to contact you back. So thank you very much from all of us today. On behalf of IOPSA and FEM, please keep safe. And we want to say thank you very much to PRB as well as SIOSH for accrediting these with CPD points. Next week, we are going to be looking at the dangers of working with high pressure. Uh, and this is when we are doing high pressure cleaning of piping, of gutters, whatever it is that you are doing. And we're going to look at the dangers of using this type of equipment. So thank you very much and I'm going to hand it over back to you Sean. 
percent, Chris. Uh, we have got no questions this morning, so I am going to go ahead and end the session off. Thanks so much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. Please do remember the survey on the way out, and then um, hoping to see everyone again same time next week. Thanks so much, guys. Bye bye.